method creates the questions you can ask and the answers that you get. I am still as convinced as ever, or more convinced, that method is defining for what can be thought and known in psychology. And if you don't get your methods right, you get very inadequate um, visions of human being. I mean, the idea that an experimenter has no relationship to the subjects. I mean, everything is a relationship, and you must acknowledge that. And then the whole idea that you take subjects and you just rip them out of their everyday lives, tuck them down in a classroom, give them a survey, and now you know about their self-esteem. You know, I mean, uh, so disembodied mm -hmm. and so decontextualized. Respecting the context, respecting relationship, respecting people's relationships with one another. Um, and then, as the researcher, acknowledging your presence when you write about things. Instead of acting like, this happened, you know, I had nothing to do with it, it was like facts. My awareness of women in psychology and women in research stems from when I worked for the Ladane Commission, uh, which was the Royal Commission on the use of non-medical drugs. Okay. And I was um, a senior investigator for them, okay. running a study on marijuana. Okay. The recruiting was to be only males. Oh, and I had a number of women who um, objected to the fact that they were being excluded from smoking good government dope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I ha really hadn't realized until then just the extent to which women were excluded um, from participating in research mm -hmm. uh, because we were a messy variable. Mm -hmm. it, it's absolutely impossible as a psychologist to try to understand things without having some information about social context. Mm -hmm. And I think just so much of psychology has done that. It just, you know, lifted things mm -hmm. out of context. Mm -hmm. And and I mean that that is the strategy of experimental psychology with, with the lab. It's useless, pointless to do that kind of work. That's the puzzle. You know, how do we try to get things that are a little more ecologically valid. Mm -hmm. um, and, that, and for me that's the appeal of, of a more um, sort of qualitative approach and um, mm -hmm. participatory and um, something that's more grounded in, in people's everyday lives. Mm -hmm. I had no colleagues uh, who knew anything about or believed in qualitative research methods mm -hmm. and had never even been told that there was such a thing as qualitative research. And so it was kind of like I was inventing it for myself in isolation. And then I discovered there's a world out there. There are people who have attached labels to these approaches. Well, I was trained like most psychologists, that quantitative is what you do, and when you do qualitative, mix it with quantitative. Right. Use a mixed methods approach to be accepted in the literature. So that I was trained very quantitatively, very secure in my experimental methodology yes. and so on. But um, when I went to York to do my PhD, um, I basically felt completely like an imposter because all of a sudden people were talking about theoretical things and about qualitative research mm -hmm. and I had no exposure whatsoever to mm -hmm. them until that point. So it was really a learning experience but of course the qualitative methods fit much more closely in many ways with my feminist politics. So I'm a methodological pluralist. I certainly don't <laughs> reject quantitative methods by any means. I think we have wonderful, sophisticated quantitative methods. I'm also very interested in discursive methods, qualitative methods in general, and most of all what fascinates me is the intersection and the dialogue mm -hmm. between and among different kinds of methods, so multi-method approaches. This methodological pluralism and intersection 
I think is something that comes through mm -hmm. all my work. I really, really see the political value of quantitative methods and I just can't, they just, they're crazy making for me if I try and engage, if I try and design a, a quantitative research project or even, yeah, or like a, um, even a survey or something, right, mm -hmm. which is qualitative but can still be quite positivist. Um, anything that tries to force our ideas into categories mm -hmm. is, it, it's crazy making. Mm -hmm. I just can't, I just can't pour our world into that. I find it so, so difficult. So I always go for methods uh -huh. that allow me to like blast things out and make very, very diverse connections. Uh -huh. I remember after I'd got my PhD, the very first paper I tried to write on, on um, postnatal depression, um, I got from someone I knew, um, I think it was a 12 pages of single spaced abuse. Um, she was one of the reviewers, she actually named herself. Um, and it was just, you know, this is not psychology, this is nonsense, you're, you're not. You know, and, and mm. that really was quite upsetting, and, and I feel foolish now that I then didn't try and publish mm. anything in a journal for quite some time after that. And Mary Bride Miller is a participatory action person. Okay. So she and I uh, were put together, I can't even remember by whom, to do a, a book basically uh, to demonstrate that both narrative and participatory action research was a part of psychology because we had both had the experience of being told that we weren't psychologists, mm -hmm. that psychologists didn't talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, I actually had someone say to me, how could you possibly learn anything about people by talking to them? <laughs> really, I swear to God. Um, not a feminist psychologist. <laughs> Clearly. I, the main thing is just having a critical perspective on gender and a critical perspective on the methods of science. And that does not mean that you have to reject them, mm -hmm. right? You know, I, I, you know I, I spent many years reading, you know, Donna Haraway and reading Sandra Harding and being about as critical about scientific practice as you could be, but I do it. Yeah. But I do it with a critical perspective that understands both the strengths and the limitations of that mode of inquiry. Uh, there are a lot of scientists who just cling to the scientific method and believe that they're totally objective and like I think that they're full of bunk. And then I've met a lot of feminists who are like, there's no way to collect data without it being oppressive and data that has no meaning and the world is socially constructed and I think that's bunk mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So for me, it means being able to work within the sort of traditional scientific practice with an eye to the social context, the historical context of the development of kind of positivist practice. Um, and a, a, a very clear view as to what you can and cannot get from that. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, that's how I define my sort of identity as a feminist scientist, that I'm doing science, and I believe I'm doing good science, mm -hmm. but I'm not stupid enough to think that I'm producing some pure objective knowledge or that I'm like seeking the path to truth. I'm seeking a path, and I'm not sure if it's truth that I'm seeking or knowledge or what, but um, I've always had this sort of multifaceted view of methodology. I'm listening to the voices of black women mm -hmm. and I'm look, listening to their voices in terms of how have they struggled with race and gender right. and right. class and then later how they struggled, struggled with sexuality mm -hmm. issues. Then I need them to talk to me. Mm -hmm. So it really came from this feminist position mm -hmm. of women's voices are not listened to. Mm -hmm. They're often downplayed and ignored. Mm -hmm. What research methods allow me to clearly hear women's voices without my voice getting so directly in the way? Mm -hmm. And that's when I started using interview approaches and um, started using more narratives because I started asking questions where we didn't have a lot of information about black feminists, right. so I needed to listen to them first. Right. We didn't have information about black feminist men. People didn't believe men could be feminists, let alone mm -hmm. a black man be the poster yeah. child for right, feminists. Right. The last book I wrote on immigrant women and sexuality was done precisely because whenever we talk about immigrant women in the field of immigration studies, women are always 
mothers in families. And that's the only way in which they're talked about. They're not talked about as individuals who are going through a process of transformation as persons. And yes, they may have families or not, but they are people who need to be listened to and their stories deserve attention. I'd like to see psychology free itself, both in theory and in methods, from the gender binary and the gender hierarchy. That is, yeah. to me, the chi-square table, it's almost like a magnet for the gender binary. Mm. And all it does is it reifies and gives statistical thing to the extent to which we perpetuate patriarchal gender norms and values. Yeah, I think of my feminism as really, really helping me to think through things like relations of power, um, to really embrace like the or value the richness of bodies and feelings and like different like epistemologies and ways of being in the world that can usually get really marginalized and in a very heavily positivist mm -hmm. discipline mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah and then and therefore using kind of more creative and collaborative methods although some of the feminist scholarship has been absorbed into the mainstream it's not always absorbed as explicitly feminist work and so I think, you know, I think what would be ideal for me would be for, for feminist psychology to be seen as a kind of meta-theoretical um, framework for the discipline and, to, you know, to be recognized in that kind of a way. If we just talk about the vulnerabilities of all of our methodologies, then we can pick and choose and, in fact, put them together in order to maximize mm -hmm. what any methodology can bring to understanding whatever it is we want to know. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the term now, psychosocial studies, it doesn't sound feminist, but it, 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 it is mm -hmm. in the sense that the whole of feminist, and psycholo feminist psychology has informed it. It's critical, you know, it's qualitative, all those things that had happened over the last 25 years or so. My version of objectivity is through subjectivity. So they're not dualistically, they're not binary terms anymore. And I've just been hooked on the narrative approach then for some of the newer questions that I'm asking and have accepted that it takes me longer because the coding and the, oh my gosh. But I get so much out of it because it's a relationship. It becomes this dialogue. Yeah. I don't forget those voices. They're not just numbers. They're not just participants. Mm -hmm. And I usually have lifelong relationships oh, with, yeah. with the people who I do these thick description right. narrative, in-depth right. interviews with. Right. They touch your life. They've mm -hmm. changed me. Mm -hmm. 